Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, inverse and joint variation as well as direct variation, which we talked about a little bit earlier in the year. Um, so basically what we're going to discuss is how different variables relate to one another, okay? Um, when we talk about inverse variation, which you can see right here, um, we say that two variables show inverse variation if they're related as follows, y equals a over x, where a is not equal to zero, and a is the constant of variation. If you remember, we did some of that with um, <clears throat> with uh, direct variation before. And so we say y is to vary inversely with x. Joint variation is when you have multiple variables, <clears throat> two or more variables, being multiplied together, the product of two or more um, quantities. And that can be like z equals a times x times y. A again is a non-zero constant, and Z is said to be varying jointly with x and y. And so down here you're gonna see that we have <clears throat> Uh, some definitions or at least some forms for direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Um, the biggest thing is, one, can I get it into this form? If so, then it will be direct, inverse, or joint. And if I can't, it won't be any of those. The other thing that I like to do is I like to look at this and say, what would happen if I get A by itself? And in this case, A would equal Y over X. And if I can get y divided by x, then I know that y varies directly with x. <clears throat> Likewise, if I take this equation and I multiply both sides by x, I would get xy equals a. So to find the constant of variation in an inverse variation problem, I would multiply x and y together. And here in this last one, if I were to go ahead and <clears throat> divide both sides by x and y, I would get a equals z divided by x times y. Um, up here, this is probably the most important part, if I can see that relationship. So like right here, when I look at this, I say, all right, well, x times y equals one-fifth. Well, when x and y are together, and I get a constant, it looks like inverse variation right here, and so this is inverse variation. If I wanted to, I could write it as y equals 1 over 5x. Put that x on the bottom, and that would be my um, y equals equation. In this one, it says y equals x plus 4. Now, you don't see any addition over here, and since we don't see any addition, this one is actually representing neither direct nor inverse variation. If I look here and I have y divided by x equals 8, well, that looks like this right here, which if I wanted to, I could say y equals 8x, because I multiply both sides by x, and that would be direct variation. And then I have y equals 4x, which is just like y equals 8x, and again, that's direct variation. And then finally, I have y equals 2 over x, which looks a lot like this formula here, and so that would be inverse variation. So that's the first step, is identifying what type of variation do we have. The next step is, given two variables, how do you see them relating, and can we use that to... Um, predict other variables, other va values. So here we say if x and y vary inversely, use the given values to write an equation relating x and y, and then find y when x equals 3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say it varies inversely, which means y equals a divided by x. I then take my x and y values and plug them in, so negative 4 equals a over 5, and I figure out A. And in this case, if I multiply both sides by 5, I get negative 20. Since that's my constant, my new equation is Y equals negative 20 divided by X. So that's the first part, write an equation relating X and Y. Here's my equation relating X and Y. My next step is find y when x equals 3. So we just take that same equation, y equals negative 20 over x, and we plug 3 in for x, and we say y equals negative 20 divided by 3, and that's our answer, negative 20 thirds. Over here we have a similar type situation. Again, we say y equals a divided by x because they vary inversely. Plug in what we know, negative 5 fourths 
equals a over uh, negative 4. When I multiply both sides by negative 4, I actually get 5. And that's what a is equal to. And so my equation is going to be y equals 5 divided by x. So there's my formula. And then I plug in uh, 3, and I say y equals 5 over x. Plug in 3 for x, y equals 5 over 3. And that's what I get for y. So that's what we're going to do when we find things that vary inversely or directly. <clears throat> the next step is to take a bunch of information and identify whether it's direct variation, inverse variation, or neither. And if it shows a type of variation, find the equation. Well, this is where I like the idea of saying that y divided by x equals a for direct variation. <clears throat> and I like the idea of x times y equals a for inverse variation. Why do I like that? Well, I like it for one of two reasons. If I can take 40 and divide it by 1.5, I get a number. And if I do 40 over 1.5, I turn on my calculator, and I say 40 divided by 1.5, and I get 26.6 .6 repeating. And if I do 24 divided by 2.5, I get 9.6. Now, A in both of these situations is a constant. Constant means the same. And these are not the same. So that means it's not direct variation. Now let's check to see if it means inverse variation. Well, if I do 1.5 times 40, I actually get 60. If I do 2.5 times 24, I also get 60. And if I do 4 times 15, what do you know? I also get 60. And then if I do 7.5 times 8, I also get 60. So I think you can see that the common uh, constant here, and 10 times 6, just for good measure, is also 60. So I think you can see that A equals 60. Since A equals 60, our equation is going to be Y equals 60 divided by x. If I needed to check that, all I would have to do is come up here and say, all right, well, let's try it out. Let's say y equals 60 divided by 15. 60 divided by 15 is 4. And that gives us this right here. I should have actually put 4 here. y equals 60 divided by 4 to get 15. But now I found another value there as well. All right. The last thing is sometimes we have variation that isn't just direct or joint or inverse. Um, and so we need to match these up. <clears throat> so when I say y varies inversely with x, that's pretty simple. That's this right here, y equals a over x. z varies jointly with x, y, and z. Well, that means, or x, y, and r, I'm sorry. So if that's the case, I have four variables there, and there's uh, direct or joint variation, I should say, multiplica multiplication. If y varies inversely with the square of x, well, here's inverse variation, and here's x squared. And so now we might say y equals a over x squared. There's the square of x. Z varies directly with y and inversely with x. Directly with y and inversely with x. Inversely means to go on the bottom. Directly means to go on the top. And so we would say that is the case. Let me just draw an arrow there to make sure we don't lose that. <clears throat> And then the last one is x varies jointly with t and r and inversely with s. Again, we see this inversely, whoops, with s. That means s is going to go on the bottom. And so I'm going to go ahead and move this last equation right there. So if we see something that has both direct, jointly, inverse, direct, and joint variation, means to multiply and that's going to go on top and if we see inverse variation 
that means to divide and that's going to go on the bottom and so whatever is varying inversely that should go on the bottom just like here where it says inversely with the square of x well there's the square of x and it's on the bottom inversely with x goes on the bottom inversely with s goes on the bottom and then this one inversely with x goes on the bottom so I hope that helped. Try your study guide from 8.1. Also, enjoy working on the fractions. A little reminiscent of third or fourth grade. But we're going to be working with 8.1, um, which is dealing with rational expressions. And um, we need to be good at fractions in order to do that. So enjoy, and we'll see you Thursday.